Chancellor, Dr. Alfred Bader belongs to that select few whose life represents the perfect marriage of intellect and passion. A chemist, art collector, and philanthropist, Alfred Bader has fashioned a life of innovation, achievement, cultivation, and generosity from beginnings fraught with hardship, danger, and injustice. Born in Austria, he moved to England to escape the Nazi persecution. In 1940, he was wrongfully deported as an enemy alien to Canada, where he was interned as a, in a prisoner of war camp for two years. Such treatment might have discouraged many, but Alfred Bader was not in any way daunted by this. After his release, he studied at Queen's University, where he proved to be a brilliant student, who in three successive years was awarded a BSc in Engineering Chemistry, a BA in History, and an MSc in Chemistry. In 1950, he received his PhD from Harvard University. Subsequently, he co-founded the Aldrich Chemical Company. And when this company merged with Sigma to become Sigma Aldrich, he took leadership, and in the ensuing years until his retirement, he served as a member of the board of this massive enterprise. From early boyhood and all through the years of building this highly successful business, Alfred, Alfred Bader's love of fine arts nurtured and sustained him. He devoted years of study to art, immersing himself in the history of 17th century Dutch and Flemish painting, and later expanding his interests to include French, Italian, and German artists. Initially, his knowledge and appreciation of painting revealed itself in his company's catalog and in the journals of Sigma Chemicals, their covers graced with works from his private collections. In 1961, he opened Alfred Bader Fine Arts. And since then, as collector, dealer, lecturer, and curator, he has earned the admiration and respect of artists and art lovers around the world. Chemistry and art have enhanced Alfred Bader's life and he, in turn, has enriched ours immeasurably. A kind and gracious philanthropist, he has established several awards in chemistry, including the Alfred Bader Award for Organic Chemistry of the Canadian Society for Chemistry. To show his abiding affection for Queen's University, he has endowed two chairs and sponsored several fellowships and awards at that institution. In 1994, he donated Hurst Monceau Castle in Sussex to his alma mater and his generosity is extended to many other institutions here and overseas. Mr. Chancellor, the Senate of this university is pleased to honor this distinguished scientist, inventor, entrepreneur, art connoisseur, collector, and philanthropist. And I ask that you now confer upon Dr. Alfred Bader, the degree Doctor of Science, honoris causa. Alfred Bader, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa. Dr. Bader will be hooded by Dr. Bill Crane, Associate Vice President, Academics.
It is with pleasure that I now call upon Dr. Alfred Bader for his convocation address. Dr. Bader? My friends, it is a very great honor to be with you today. What can I say that might help the graduates? Today is one of the major turning points of your life. And so it's a good time to consider what you require for a good life. Firstly, you need intelligence. Whether you have more or less is really the luck of it all. But all of you have intelligence. For without it, you wouldn't be here at this great university. What counts for a good life is what you do with your intelligence. Secondly, you require good health. Again, this is largely a matter of chance. Though if you're wise, you will value your good health. Of course, you live in Canada with a system of health care, while not perfect, is still greatly envied by many countries around the world, particularly the hundreds of thousands and millions of uninsured in the United States. But don't take good health for granted. Smoke and you're likely to shorten your life by several years. Thirdly, you have to make or perhaps you have already made two important decisions. One is the choice of a good partner. Please don't worry, I am not here as a marriage counselor. But I know that a good partner can make a tremendous difference to the quality of your life. Of course, some people are self-contained enough to prefer living alone. And such a lifestyle is possible today for both men and women. But believe me, as far as I'm concerned, I found life far, far better with a good partner. It only took me nine days to propose to her. Thank you, Isabel. Your second choice is the choice of your work. Keep in mind that the majority of people in the world do not really like their work. Many are bored. Some are afraid of it. Some actually hate it. But with your education, you have the possibility of choice. You probably know the old Chinese saying, if you want to be happy for a day, buy a bottle of wine. If for a week, roast a pig. If for a year, get married. If for a lifetime, find work that you really enjoy. Well, my friends, the wine and the roast pig, that's a matter of preference. I completely disagree that marriage happiness is only for one year. I am wonderfully happy. But there's no question 
the true happiness in life. For that you require work that you really appreciate. The more you love your work, the more you can give to it. And the more you give to it, the greater will be your satisfaction. I'm sure that you're all hoping that you will find, or maybe you already have found, that ideal position where you can do what you really love doing and be paid for it. If you're not lucky at first, don't be discouraged. Make the best of what you have, but keep looking. And even if and when you do find what you're looking for, you will need that most important quality, persistence. Persistence. As Calvin Coolidge put it so clearly, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. And lastly, remember Thomas Carlyle's great saying, do the duty which lies nearest. If, as you are likely to be, you are determined and persistent, and you do have the good fortune to find work you truly appreciate, you are likely to be so successful that there will be an enormous number of demands on your time. Do the duty which lies nearest. You cannot do everything. There will be many legitimate demands on you, many worthy causes, but you will have to choose. This is seldom easy, but very necessary. My friends, I am convinced that each of us is here for a purpose, and that each of us is the link between the past and the future. It is so important that we do not lose our way. But most important, know where you are going. That great New York Yankee coach, Yogi Berra, had wonderful advice. You have to be very careful if you don't know where you're going, because you might not get there. My friends, with your intelligence, and your persistence, you will get there. Good luck. Thank you, Dr. Bader. With your intelligence and your persistence, you will get there. Good luck. Thank you, Dr. Bader.